This podcast contains explicit content. You are listening to Hardly Focus. Let's begin the show by starting it. Hey, we're Hardly Focus. Thank you for checking us out tonight. Jack Yo, Mike Tarara. You can find us at hardlyfocus.com. We are on your favorite podcast app, uh, except for Spotify for some reason. I'm trying to figure that out. And uh, we're on YouTube. You can just search all of those places for Hardly Focused, or uh, might I say quickly, a podcast of the month. Hardly Focused. Oh. Uh, A Discord uh, group that I'm part of called the Podcasters Community started up a podcast of the month, and uh, we were the inaugural show. I I didn't even, I didn't put the show's (laughs) name in. Someone else must have, and uh, that was a nice surprise to to sign into Discord to today. So uh, your podcast of the month on the podcasters community, hardly focused. Podcasting. What I liked is there were so many fun facts they could have picked from, and the fun fact that they they pointed out is that we've been doing this for well over a decade. Which uh, it's fine. I, I, I mean, cool. apparently that may actually be a fun fact. But like, yeah, all the podcasts <laughs> that you you listen to have only been around for two years. I well, if that, I know a lot of people have tried to start up podcasts and they, um, they they give up after only a handful of episodes. They realize it's too much, or they realize they've done everything that they they can do. So, or they realize that they can never compare to the audio quality of Jack Gill. I will pride myself in that, and I remember some of the best feedback I uh received about this show when we were on um i think it was either edge fm or, or more like radio uh i reached out to i think it was chris hamill because he was one of the guys in charge there and i and i and he was also a big audiophile too and i asked him like hey just want to see how we're doing with the show and how we're doing on the station and he said that we had the best sounding podcast one of the best sounding podcasts he had ever heard and we were the gold standard that he wanted to see every show on the station follow. Damn. So that is sexy. <laughs> uh, and I, and I said, uh, thank you, sir. I'm going to go kill myself now because <laughs> there's nothing. I have nothing left to live for at this point. <laughs> I've, I've, I've accomplished life. <laughs> I am done. Well, anyway, speaking of life. Uh, uh, oh, huh, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. By the way, we're on Facebook Live, uh, or, or uh, at least I think we are. So uh, you can uh, check out our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Hardly Focus Podcast. Uh, Roe v. Wade has been around for almost uh, 50 years. And it might soon be coming to a close. And I don't like saying that. But... <laughs> But if you are not paying attention to anything in the news today, what technically happened last night? But what happened today, Jack? Politico, which is uh, I don't I now I'm not in a I don't get into politics. I really don't. We we dabble in politics from time to time on this podcast, but yeah, just like, like like dabble like Jack dabbles with cocaine, not a lot, but just on occasion, just just a smidge, just a smidge. Just a smidge. And uh, Politico, is, it's like of the places I'll check, one of them is Politico because, uh, you know, they're right there uh, in Washington. You know, they're the they're right on the front lines reporting everything. I'd sooner trust them over like any other uh, mainstream media. You know? I mean, unless it's AP and like AP is like up there. Yeah, the AP and Politico. Politico, uh, Godspeed to whoever had the, the brass balls to leak this to Politico. Because they revealed last night that there's a draft uh, that uh, will basically demolish, destroy Roe v. Wade. It's not official yet. It hasn't been voted on, but there, the, the drafted proposal exists, and it was leaked. Politico posted the entire thing, and as you can imagine... Uh, right-minded people are upset about it. Not the right, but right-minded no. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, now, uh, Mike, yep. you you have kids. 
I do. I have chillin'. But yes, I'm. I'm just going to take a guess that you're pro-choice. Uh, yes, yes, I am. Given your other political leanings that we may or may not be familiar with, <clears throat> yes, yeah, I'm pro-choice too. <clears throat> okay, and, and, and I'm starting off rather calm right now as you're as you're putting <laughs> the information out there. Yes, but don't worry. <clears throat> I will unleash the beast soon enough, uh, <laughs> we, but keep going, keep going there, Jack, as we, uh, as we go on. So, uh, Politico, uh, nice enough to have, uh, sort of a cheat article, if you will, 10 key passages from Alito's draft opinion, which go. would, overturn. and now keep in mind, Politico does lean a little bit to the left, slightly askew, slightly left. And they're, they're generally reliable, but they are not in the very, very top, top tier. But they are generally reliable. See, that's why I like AP too, because AP is um, AP is top of the, top of the list. Right, they're agnostic on that. You know, they're neither uh, left nor right. So yeah, uh, and usually when they call something, then it's you know it's yeah. official. It's the thing. So uh, yeah, Politico has this article: ten key passages from Alito's draft opinion, which would overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, one of the lines here: Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. <laughs> Is what I say to that. Yeah. Uh, well, let me jump back here. Oh, quote: We hold that Roe and Casey, remember Casey Roe v. Wade is legalizing abortion. Uh, and then it was Casey versus Planned Parenthood, which basically uh, changed. It, it changed, I guess, like verbiage in Roe v. Wade. It, it made it so, like, what you define as, uh, like, an abortion. If I'm, I might be totally speaking out my ass here. It has something to do with like, instead of trimesters, it's doing it based on uh, viability. Uh, let me see here. I'm neither a Planned lawyer Planned nor a doctor. Parenthood, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, I believe, is the uh, yeah. what they're referencing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll find out while you're talking right okay. now. So. Uh, only on the podcast do I play both a lawyer and a doctor. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, uh, we hold yeah, that you, you keep on calling yourself a doctor, but really you're just a dentist <laughs> <laughs> dental assistant. Thank you very much. Uh, we hold that Rowan Casey must be overruled. The constitution makes no reference to abortion. No such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision. I think Casey is, is, is revolving around putting undue standards on abortion restrictions. Yeah. Um, that's what would happen. So they're like, well, you got to do this, 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 and this, and like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's too much. You can't do that. So that's against it. Basically prevents, it, you know, de facto prevents, you know, abortions with the, without actually making the law preventing it. Mm -hmm. So that's Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Uh, quote, the inescapable conclusion is that a right to abortion is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. On the contrary, an unbroken tradition of prohibiting uh, abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of common law until 1973. It, we, I really have a problem with, with constitutional uh, originalists because it's like, oh, great, we're going back to the original. Well, then at this point, fuck it. If you're black, sorry, you're now a slave again. If you're a woman, get the fuck in the kitchen and stop voting. Like, And if you're not a landowning white male, shut the fuck up and sit down. Like, no, 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 you can't go back. This is... The Constitution was meant, and, and the Bill of Rights was meant to be a living, breathing document that changes with the needs of America. All right? And the realities of, of life, okay? And use that term, you know, generally speaking, because life exists as, as, as two cells. It does. But that's not a human, okay? Right? It's just two cells. Yep. Uh, warning! Take your fucking blast assist to go anywhere. Warning signs was uh, about a year ago, I think it was, when Texas uh, made abortion. Oh my fucking god, Texas! Illegal. Now I think Arkansas has done it too. There's some, there's another. There state. are a bunch of states. So basically, here's the breakdown: take the ten lowest performing states in reading comprehension and uh, scholastic uh, learning, and those ten states are banning abortion. And honestly, I haven't even looked at a chart of where the actual laws are going to take place, but prove me the fuck wrong. It's all red states too, right? Oh my God, yeah. 
It's all the red states that really can't afford uh, to do anything else besides, you know, kowtow to their extra religious base, yeah. whatever. But yeah, um, the ones that are uh, all right to life, but as soon as the baby's born, fuck you. Here's some shitty schools, no fucking uh, support for, you know, growing up uh, anything other than poverty. So whatever. Fucking hypocrites. Well, speaking it's of. starting, It's starting. Get me going. Speaking of. Fuck going. So, uh, are you uh, ahead of time before I before I reveal them? Do you know the <laughs> the the names of the Republican justices besides Alito that are in favor? Well, um, I know that uh, Gorsuch, uh, uh, frat boy, and uh, Bible bitch um, are the three news that we are that were guaranteed. Yeah. So uh, Alito, and I'm assuming. Roberts is on the fence, but Clarence Thomas is in. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah. Yeah. You got them all. So Yeah. So basically Roberts is a maybe and Clarence Thomas, uh, and his, his bitch of a wife, um, are, are, are yeses. So fuck them. Yep. Uh, so Clarence Thomas, who, uh, his wife, uh, supported the, uh, insurrection on January 6th. Mm hmm. Uh, Neil Gorsuch, as you said, uh, Brett Kavanaugh. I like beer. <laughs> Squee. Uh, and Amy Coney Barrett, who uh, when when she was sworn in. Uh, now, there were two signs of the death of Roe v. Wade well before this came out and well, yes. well before the thing with Texas happened. Uh, RBG passing away. Yep. And then Amy Coney Barrett getting uh, sworn in. Yep. Which, uh, I don't know. This is going to sound bad. You would think that a female would be for this. You'd think. I. You would think. I personally, however, since this came out today, I personally don't know a single female who has come out in, in support of this, personally. You are not in the right circles, buddy. You live in Massachusetts. And the irony being that we have a Republican governor who is absolutely against this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, here, here's the deal. I mean, a uh, sidebar. Okay. Massachusetts, when they elect a Republican, they Massachusetts always has a Democratic House and Senate. Always. There's, there's no way around it. That's a, Massachusetts is a bastion of a blue. Most of the time, they realize that there needs to be give and take. And in order to do that, you can't have a Democratic governor as well because things don't work as well because you don't have that requirement of compromise. So most of the time they're like, Hey, we got to rep. We got to get at least a uh, Republican governor. And the Republican governor of Massachusetts is basically a centrist. Anyway, he's not going to be a fucking crazy lunatic asshole. Like he's not GOP level. He's just, I'm a Republican classically, you know? So that's why he's that, you know, yeah, he's Republican, but he's like, I'm not, I'm not a dumb Republican. Right. Yeah. And, uh, in Massachusetts wouldn't stand for that either. No, and uh, apparently there um, is what's that? Um, I uh, the, what, there's there's a term that they've got um, tri a trigger a trigger laws. They've got tri trigger laws going into effect. Okay. So Massachusetts passed a trigger law, I believe, in 2018, where if Roe v. Wade is overturned, this law immediately goes into effect. Ooh. But it doesn't go into effect until it happens. Like it's basically to stay in stasis mode. And that literally goes into effect stating in five out of the six New England states have it. New Hampshire is the only one that doesn't is that as soon as Roe versus Wade is overturned, there are laws in the book that say um, abortion is completely legal in this state. Uh, there is no restriction on it. Massachusetts actually lowered the uh, age uh, for requirement 16 in Massachusetts. You can get an abortion at 16 without parental consent. Um, and they also did a couple other things to widen abortion. Anything before 24 weeks, no questions asked. Anything after 24 weeks, I do say, I think they said that, you know, doctor uh, guidance and, you know, if it, it threatens the health of the mother mm. at that 24 weeks at that point, because that is at the edge of viability at 24 weeks. But anything before then, they're like, yeah, it's up to you. Make the call. Uh, Boston.com actually has a very good article called uh, What Would the End of Roe v. Wade Mean for Massachusetts? Uh, and everything that you just explained is in there. Uh, they do not actually use the words trigger law at any point. 
Uh, what is there is is a term there is it's, a term I can't think of it right they, now. They call it the Roe Act. The Roe Act, yeah, but there's a term that the, the Republican states have ready to go when Roe v. Wade gets overturned, and they, theirs is it triggers an abortion ban. Ours is the opposite trigger. Sure, but I but I can't remember the term for it. Damn. Yeah, yeah, they uh, Boston.com seems a little too uh, modest. <laughs> they won't use the term, <laughs> so. Uh, but everything that you just mentioned, they do call that out there. Basically, yeah, what what you mentioned, and that it's uh, codified into uh, state law. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if and, you, and it's five out of the six New England states, and not for nothing, New England does tend to have some smart motherfuckers compared to some of those red states, bitches. So, are you worried that right. uh, New Hampshire? Isn't going to change mean, your stance. I feel like New Hampshire just does it just to be spiteful because of their license plate or live free or die. They're like, we don't want to make any laws, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, they tend to, it tends to swing a little bit conservative more traditionally because they don't want laws in the books in the first place. Yeah. But we'll see. They may just be like, hey, you know what? We'll go with it. But I mean, it's New Hampshire, I mean, literally you can be no more than an hour away from a border in New Hampshire anyway. So you're fine. Right. You know, it's not like Texas where you drive eight hours and you're still in fucking Texas. Jesus Christ. Texas is his own country. <laughs> they try to be. <laughs> Maybe they should be. Well, look, um, I know a lot. I have a lot of female friends. I know a, a, a lot of females, some of whom I'm friends with. <laughs> the way you're phrasing it, man. <laughs> they've had, a, uh, well, they've had abortions. They, they've, okay. they've had abortions. And right. uh, they very obviously are going to be the ones that are affected by this, affected by this in support of this. Mm -hmm. And I have no issue with their decision to do that. I mean, it's coming from someone who uh, sterilized himself on purpose. Yeah. This time. <laughs> yeah. And if, uh, you know, when, when Kate and I were together, if it, it, she ever got knocked up either by me or otherwise. And if she chose to, you'd say, I support your decision. I'd I would be on. I'd be heavily on the side of uh, please get that thing vacuumed out of you. But her decision in the end, if there she wanted go. to keep it, then uh, I'll get them a father. <laughs> oh, that's a scary thought. Thankfully, it never came to that, and I have taken steps on my own to uh, make sure it will never come to that. That's what she said. But, uh, yeah, I fully, uh, you know, I support all of my friends' respective decisions that they, they made to not yeah. move forward with their and, pregnancies. And it's, it's, it's this idea that no one is saying abortion is legal. You have to have an abortion. It's like this idea of like, oh my God, because abortion's on the table, it's going to happen. Like it's it's not gonna happen unless you want to get an abortion. Right. And the biggest problem is the all you gotta do is look at Central America. Okay. They criminalized, and that's the problem here too, in a bunch of these fucking states. They criminalized getting an abortion. Of course they did. All right. Now, Jack does not have a uterus um, or a deuterus, either way. Um, but little known fact, um, up to a, a, between a quarter and a third of pregnancies and in miscarriage. A lot of them are early enough to where they don't even know they're pregnant. And sometimes it's within the first, you know, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Well, apparently down in, I think it's Guatemala or Costa Rica, I'm not sure which. Well, hey, you've got to prove that that was a miscarriage because otherwise we think you forced a uh, an abortion. That's 10 years in prison. Oh, How the fuck Christ. are you going to prove that you had a miscarriage? Why do you have to prove that? Get the fuck out of here with that fucking Judeo-Christian bullshit. All right. Separation of church and motherfucking state body. Goddamn autonomy. Apparently less, less laws, except for a fucking uterus constitutional carry every fucking day of my life. So I can shoot whoever the fuck I want in any goddamn city, but holy <laughs> shit, a fucking uterus. Get the fuck out of here. You better belong in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant 24 seven motherfucker. 
Get the fuck out of here with that absolute goddamn bullshit. And I'm going to say goddamn every single time just to piss you off even more. <laughs> yeah, see, this, this is why I'm happy that we live where we live because we're not. This isn't Sarah a third- said point blank, we're never leaving Massachusetts. She said if this passes, we're not leaving Massachusetts. It's going to be hell to find a house that we can afford because people are going to be moving here. But she's like, we're not taking Gigi out of Massachusetts. Well, even just being no point. Uh, even just being in this country, you know, and enjoying yeah. uh, 30 of the, you know, almost 50 years that Roe v. Wade has been a thing where there's been that freedom of choice and there should be that freedom and of choice. Abortion rates have gone down since Roe v. Wade was enacted. Like you can look at the actual numbers. Abortions have gone down year after year. But you know what has helped them go down? Comprehensive sex education and access to contraceptives to prevent pregnancy in the first place. When Arkansas says abstinence only education, no wonder why the abortion rate skyrockets. People don't like, oh, I can use the pull-out method. Bullshit. The guy's not going to fucking pull out anyway. He's too goddamn jacked up on Mountain Dew to do that, all right? <laughs> I knew someone... I, I knew this chick from high school and she got pregnant and if I stand on my head, it, it won't, I won't get pregnant. Well, she seriously believed that her boyfriend, because he drank a lot of Mountain Dew before the act that he was sterile and that she wouldn't get pregnant. So she didn't understand how she could have possibly, possibly gotten pregnant. She was, she was not smart. <sighs> Uh, also one of those types that you wouldn't know she was pregnant. Yeah. But I digress. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's not, see, here's the thing. I, I see on, like, I, I've seen uh, in, on Instagram, I've seen on social media, all, all these different posts, like memes, whatever, going around that I'll say, like, basically we're saying women should have the choice. The word should, shouldn't be in there. No, no, it shouldn't have to be in there. Right. It's women have the choice. The 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 decisions should not be the decisions for what the a woman should be doing with her body should not be left in the hands of a, a bunch of 70-year-old conservative white males. Yeah, it's and it's the same argument that people have over, you know, black lives matter. It's 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 the should. Black lives should matter. We don't, we shouldn't have to have the should in there. (laughs) Women should have rights. (laughs) Women should have body autonomy. We don't, we shouldn't have to have the should. Uh, I was watching, uh, it was the BBC. The BBC. And they were featuring clips of U.S. senators responding to uh, the leak, the news of the leak, and the verbiage in the leak. And t- take a guess, take a guess who the only one in the bunch was that was in favor of it, and vehemently so. Uh, in favor of Roe v. Wade being overturned? Yes. Um, and let's see. Uh, and it's from, from the BBC? It's from the BBC, but they're talking about U.S. senators. So yeah, I know, I know. It. I'm just trying to think, like, if the BBC is talking, they're going to talk uh, Mitch McConnell? He was, he was in there. Okay. Um, I'm an idiot too. I can't tell if what he said was in favor. Of uh, well, Mitch McConnell is definitely a Republican asshole. Right. I mean, he's a turtle, so technically turtles lay eggs. So yeah, it's a little bit different. I'd be um, floored. I think Rand, there was, I think there was actually three in there that uh, McConnell. Rand Paul is always a good one because he's a fucking asshole and he's a doctor, but he's a fucking shithead. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She wasn't in there. Really? Because she's so. like the poster child for crazy. Yeah, rightly uh, so. Well, she's Susan, not- I know Susan Collins made some comments, but but she's a fucking bitch on the wall in Maine. She's a fucking moose fucker. I hate her. Um, um, man, it could, it wouldn't wouldn't that be nice to fucking go trend viral? Susan Collins, moose fucker. Um, <laughs> and then watch, she gets an abortion because she's pregnant yeah, with a moose's she's play, baby. Yeah, she played half person, half moose. Like what the fuck? <laughs> uh, it's like it's like a minotaur. Yeah. Uh, you want me to who tell you? else? Who else? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll oh, give you fucking, a uh, uh, I know Texas fucking Ted Cruz. Yeah, it was, it was Ted Cruz. 
Ted Cruz, who hasn't, who hasn't done ad, any fucking shit ever since he became senator, except fucking be a goddamn mouthpiece on Fox News. Oh, no, no, no. He did one thing. Yeah. He abandoned his state. Oh, yes. He when, did go when, to Cancun. Yeah. When, when and Texas had, shamed back going at, back in there. When Texas had no power. Yeah. yeah. When AOC actually raised more money to help Texas out than fucking the Texas senator. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. He needs to get the hit in the face with a pie. I mean, I think he already has. But. <laughs> I'm afraid anything else, anything else I say will either get me canceled or arrested. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with the safest thing I can think of, which is 10 well, banana cream pies pie, to the face. As long as that banana pe- cream pie has been sitting out in the Texas sun for a week, I think that's okay. <laughs> it's laced with barbiturates. <laughs> Sir, I hope you ingest some of this, which you might because you're quite portly. <laughs> there we go that's uh that's the edge of what we can get to. <laughs> so uh yeah i look i feel i do feel bad for quite literally every female i know who's affected by this you're right mike i do associate myself with uh, you know i guess a certain crowd yeah um, so i mean you're not getting i mean it's not your fault i mean you associate yourself with people that are at least you know open-minded or at least somewhat intelligent most of the time so sure uh, i mean you, you've got that going for you yeah but 70 percent of america overall supports keeping roe versus wade it's a vocal crazy fucked up minority that has been tweaking each state in order to keep their power even though they're in the minority and uh ultimately this this may be because this got leaked uh and power to the person who leaked it uh, this may be the catalyst to put some balls, or I shouldn't say balls because balls are delicate and fragile, to put some ovaries on these goddamn Democrats to do some shit or spark a little revolt of our own uh, to fight against uh, the injustices that are being uh, perpetrated by uh, these uh, Gilead Republicans here. Because we are close. So I've seen a bunch of people say, I can't watch The Handmaid's Tale anymore. It's no longer science fiction. It is fact. Like we are in the edge of The Handmaid's Tale. That's really fucking sad. <laughs> yeah. People are like, I can't watch it. I couldn't, I honestly, after this, I could not watch after the, the second season. Like I, it was, it was too real. Like this, it was, it's jarring when you're like, I, I'm, even if it's, dystopian future i can get into that no problem but like it's too close to reality and it's too close to what is going to happen like as as margaret atwood said this was a warning not a playbook the one of the last lines i guess in the draft according to politico and again they have an article that uh it's the 10 key passages from the the draft opinion which would overturn Roe v. Wade. And it says, quote, this is a long one. So buckle, uh, buckle up. Okay. It says, quote, we do not pretend to know how our political system or society will respond to today's decision overruling Roe and Casey. We and don't fucking know. Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, don't fuck you. You know, okay. Keep going. No, it says we do not pretend to know. Oh, we don't pretend. Okay. Right. If they said, we don't know how, yeah, my word. That's not like, yeah, you can you can like facetiously say, oh, these guys are a bunch of idiots. No, that is at that point, you are certifiably mentally handicapped. If you were saying we don't know how people are going to react to this. Some people might be upset. Some people might be upset. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Quote, and even if we could foresee what will happen, we would have no authority to let that knowledge influence our decision. We can only do our job, which is to interpret the law, apply long-standing principles of stare decisis, and decide this case accordingly. We therefore hold that the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey must be overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion must be returned to the people and their elective, elected representatives. It's all this, it's, it's how they bullshit it to where states' rights, states' rights, states' rights. It's the same thing. It falls back to the same argument. States' rights to do what? Own slaves? That's why we they, they fucking fought the Civil War, you idiots. States' rights, Maya. Get the fuck out of here. Well, fucking come bullshit. on. Come on up to Massachusetts. 
because uh, yeah, we don't use coat hangers up here. Thank you very much. You'll be safe. We will. We will vacuum out your fetuses with a smile on our faces. Yeah, and Elma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, here's here's what I'm I'm wondering. It's got me thinking because I know I've I've got relatives and I know several women who uh, have they, they are either pregnant or they have had children via uh, IVF. Those are the ones I'm wondering, are they for this or against it? Because they, they, I, I have, I have personally talked to uh, some people that have done IVF and they have said that while they try to, you know, they, they have trouble conceiving, it is their choice to want to get pregnant. It is not their choice for somebody else to f- be forced to be pregnant. I, I, there's very, very few people that I have interacted with that have done IVF or, you know, fertility treatments or anything like that to become pregnant where it's not like, Hey, I stuck it in the first time and I sneezed and you're pregnant. And the, the, the vast majority of them are like, it doesn't matter what I am personally trying to go through to get pregnant. Yeah. My, you know, it shouldn't be. And the thing you turn it around, you know, not everybody should be forced to go through IVF if they can't become pregnant so they can force to carry a child, right? It's the same thing. It's the, it's forcing something on someone's body that they do not want to do. It's nice to live in a, in a country, in a part of the world where religion isn't like influencing the majority of the population's decisions. Yeah. Religion's a backdrop in every single state. The difference is, is it the entire backdrop or is it a part of the tapestry? Right. I mean, let's be honest. Massachusetts is fucking Catholic as all hell. I mean, let's be real. But they know enough to be like, yeah, we got to back the fuck off. Right. Whereas there's other areas of the world where it's, it's, it's almost mandated. You have yeah. to do this. <clears throat> Yeah, and I'll be honest, if you're an evangelical Christian, you can go straight to hell because you're probably going to do that because you are perverting the Lord Jesus Christ's fucking words. All right? There, I said it. How do you think the uh how do you think the state of Utah feels about this? Oh my god, fucking they're 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 fucking happy as hell. They can name 15 more kids their crazy fucking white people names. <laughs> Mackenzie. <laughs> Mackenzie. <laughs> Rick Tonnington. <laughs> fuck out of here st- <sighs> I know quite yeah. a few Mormons and all of yeah. them have no less than four children oh yeah it's their job to repopulate the earth after Jesus came to North America <sighs> fucking crazies yeah okay you're just you're just a well-mannered cult okay get over it <laughs> they, they, they dress nicely yeah, with their special underwear. Get the fuck out of here. It's the crazy ones that no one hears about that are on the, all the Netflix documentaries about abusing their kids. Yeah. You, know, you just want your one scotch away from doing that anyway. Fucking weirdos. All right. Well, uh, God, I hope that uh, it is not. Though Those that are somehow in power are unsuccessful at overturning Roe v. Wade. I hope that in the next two months, uh, there's a, a, a push. Here's what I hope. It's not going to happen because no, not enough people have the balls to do it, but there's nine justices. Those nine justices existed when there were nine circuits in, in the United States. There are 13 circuits in the United States and the judges have not kept pace. So what needs to happen is literally there needs to be signed an order of, we are now expanding the Supreme court to 13. Here are my six new justices. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. And they're all trans women and men and, you know, flamboyantly gay. And, and, uh, they are, you know, RuPaul's drag race winners, just to piss off the most right wing motherfuckers out there because you know what? Fuck you and your goddamn religion <laughs> forcing it down my throat or sorry. So forcing it up somebody's uterus. Uh, Oh, uh, I, I didn't mention this, uh, according to Politico in their bombshell article, Mm -hmm. uh, the three, quote, the three Democratic appointed justices who are working on one or more dissents, Stephen Breyer. Yep. Sonia Sotomayor. Yep. And Elena Kagan. Yep. 
So there you go. Oh God, I hope they lose. I hope the 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 Republicans <laughs> lose. I don't know if they are, but I do know that if this happens, there, I'm I'm worried about a reckoning, if you will, of uh, of the left and having the 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 fortitude to do what needs to get done. And I feel like we we always fall back on the good guys always have to follow the rules, the bad guys don't. And the Republicans are the fucking bad guys. Mm-hmm. They 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 bend the rules and they break the rules to their whims. And then the Democrats are like, "Well, we got to play within the rules to fix the problems." And the rules keep on getting broken and they don't fix the problems enough because they're playing within the rules. And I feel like rules need to get broken in order to fix America right now. And I don't know if they're going to do it. And I want them to. And I need them to. Because my America sucks right now. And my kids' America is going to suck even more. Yeah, see, that's why I didn't have... That's why I had my vasectomy. I don't want to bring children up in this world. And that's why my kids are going to be defenders of the revolution. <laughs> they're going to be patriots, damn it! God damn right. They are going to take up arms against the tyrannical government. And there's nothing a thing I can do against it because they are going to learn how to fight for freedom because they're going to have to. When Mitch McConnell finally drops dead, do you think that's going to mark a turning point or do you think we're still I be fucking fucked? hope so because he has a stranglehold on the goddamn GOP right now. Fucking he does. And he's he fucking he stonewalls is. everything. Any progress because it's a zero. They play a zero sum game. They play a zero sum game. If it benefits anybody other than a Republican, it's, it's dead in the water, which is not helping America. Imagine being a man and being named Addison. Uh, reminds me of Adderall. <laughs> yeah, Ad, yeah. Addison's fine for a, a, a female, but that, that, that name suits Mitch McConnell. Cause that's his, that's his uh, first name. And he's one of those that goes by his middle name. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, was it Raphael Cruz? Yeah. Addison, Addison Mitchell McConnell. Turtle. Whatever. I mean, yeah. His name's Yertle, okay? <laughs> He's going to live to 150. All right. That's all we need to know. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, obviously, uh, Mike, very uh, heated, very animated about this. Slightly, just slightly. Just a little bit. I don't even have a uterus. I, I personally don't even need to give a shit. I don't need to. I have to, though. Just uh, I'll 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 wrap this with saying, uh, vote. I might be a lazy asshole, but I will tell everyone else to go vote, and make sure as, as much as it matters in your in your district, the way they fucking gerrymander the fuck out of it. Yep. Make sure we can keep uh, keep things uh, blue controlled as much as possible, as much as we can. All right. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk about the Maddie Siegel stuff uh, and uh, some uh, some more local news. So uh, stick around. Hardly focused. I would like to begin this episode by uh, telling you guys what a stupid asshole I am. <laughs> it's different from every other day of the week because. <laughs>